Once again, that uh, old-fashioned BBC sounder is a way of saying, hey, we're back. Please pay attention. This is Interesting Ideas for a Monday afternoon. And we trust things are going fairly well for you. Uh, Fairly well for me. However, there is a a little bit of uh, Monday blues as uh, we're looking at some projects and seeing whether they're going to work and uh, hopefully uh, keep them north, true north, and keep them from going south. So we're working on that. But uh, something very unusual. I've heard about it. I've heard of other people do it, but it actually happened to me today. And so uh, we're going to just briefly talk about that, get your response to that. And could it be that uh, Tucker Carlson is being held hostage? And uh, that has some interesting stories to it. Certainly an interesting idea. And then a little talk, what I call uh, the uh, shepherd story, the shepherd story. Hopefully uh, some thoughts for a Monday that'll get you going in terms of thinking a little more creatively, and hopefully it'll be helpful to you. My name is Stan Houston. This is What It Takes Radio, a company that is designed to help you connect with your audience and perhaps to uh, have a brief touch of immortality. We'll always tell you more about that. Hey, the program begins right now. Well, just before I came to the studio this morning, I was uh, up very, very early picking up some work and getting a lot of work done and then went out and did a few errands and came back to the recording studio. And uh, when I was out, I was running a usual, uh, you know, Monday morning errands and uh, I was at the dollar store picking up some stuff there. Always uh, watch out for that stuff. And uh, as a a nice uh, woman was uh, just paying her bill and then as I put my stuff forward, uh, and it went through. She stood there and said, and, uh, and I'm paying for his too. <laughs> and she offered to pay my bill. I don't know her. She doesn't know me at all. I'm just the next person in line. And she offered to pay my bill. <laughs> well, I went up to her and said, my goodness, no, you can't do that. Um, you're a... And she said, it's not very much, and I want to pay your bill. And I said, you are truly a beautiful person, and that's incredibly grateful. But let me tell you, uh, there are people who could probably use the help more than I need it. I mean, I'm always very grateful for help, but uh, I'm just fine. So, hey, uh, why don't you do it next time with somebody who probably needs it a little bit more than me? And she said, well, you're very kind too. And I said, no, you are the one that's very kind. You are the kind of person who's making the world a little bit better. And... Uh, We agreed, and she said, I'll remember you when I uh, do it for somebody else. I've heard of people doing that, just as kind of a a random act of kindness uh, and uh, just making the world a better place, and um, I just never had it done for me before. But I thought about that, you know... (laughs) I'm going to try that myself sometime. And uh, where where perhaps it's obvious that, you know, uh, someone might be a little bit struggling or uh, dealing with things that they uh, could perhaps use someone to say, hey, let me take care of it for you. Uh, I would love to hear some of your stories about that. Have any of you ever tried to do that? Um, I would love to have you kind of write in, do a voicemail in, and tell me the story of doing that. And by the way, now you can do that. That's so easily. This is what the magic of this media is. You could take your smartphone, and you know, it has a audio recording uh, voice note section, and you could tell me a story of either having done that yourself or having it done to you. And then uh, all you do is you can send it via an email, And it goes right to me, and uh, I can then, even though that's how it was done, we can turn that into a pretty broadcast quality program. In fact, uh, that's something that you can do all the time, and uh, I'd love to hear your story. 
So on that Monday, good note, not a blue note at all. Uh, just nice to know that there are people around still who are, are good at being real good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The other news is, as I always say, <laughs> wait 72 hours. And that's why, uh, whether it's a tragedy like a gun shooting or anything else of current events that hits the breaking news, uh, people pop off all the time and uh, talk. Now, I've done a, a little bit on Tucker Carlson because what happened to him when the Fox News media fired him obviously has repercussions for a lot of the people in the radio industry and in my business that uh, we need to know about and talk about. And so I did a, a video program on uh, my program, which is uh, how to be world class, how to uh, reach your audience, how to teach your and tell your story. And that's what we do. Those of you who want to do something like this, have a strong voice, and we'll talk about that this week. If you'd like to be on the radio and have your own podcast program, like so many important people are, and you are important. So if you want to do that, you can reach out to me again at StanHouston at gmail.com, and uh, we'll be able to help you get on the radio and uh, make that happen. But the news now is that... Uh, Tucker Carlson wasn't fired. Um, at least that's the reports from uh, an old colleague, Megyn Kelly, who left Fox News after not necessarily having a happy relationship at the end. But And I heard this from one other source, is that they're still negotiating because his contract goes through to the 24 election which obviously you can see makes sense. Uh, he's a major, I mean, he has one of the top rated news programs, commentary programs in the nation. And obviously he's made a lot of money for Fox and Fox has paid him a lot of money. But uh, then this sudden firing, which we now realize had a number of implications in it. But now the thought is that he wasn't fired. He just was taken off his program, and that if he wants to do something else, he can't because he's still under contract and still being paid till 2024. And some people are speculating that uh, Fox is willing to pay the price to shut him up because as long as he's under contract to Fox, he can't work for somebody else. And so unless he perhaps breaks that and risks severe financial penalties, or unless he may be able to negotiate uh, a deal where he is totally released from his contract, and then he can go out and find something else, and obviously he will. He can even start his own something else, which he probably will do. But isn't that an interesting phenomenon, how those kind of politics and personalities and things like that take place. And um, part of the problem is, at least in some respects, is though he has not done another program, uh, Carlson Tucker has been a guest, as he obviously can, on other people's podcasts. And uh, he's done it before, and some of those are being replayed now. And uh, one of his strong, strong uh, character qualities, and I guess some people would wonder uh, if it is a real character quality, but I believe it is, and I believe many people would believe it is, that he is strongly uh, believing that the leadership class in our country is failing us. They're just not, you know, and it's not just the politics. It's uh, in so many institutions educational, uh, entertainment, uh, in, in so many uh, corporations and technologies that uh, the men and women who are running things are not very good at it. And in many cases, as he said, I know them and I've discovered they're not very good people. 
And so that major, major thrust right now, which is as we're looking at the world as it is, we're saying, oh my goodness, what a mess. And that's, uh, that's part of going to be uh, the ongoing malaise that's going to be taking over. And we're trying to uh, overcome it ourselves, and perhaps you're trying to overcome it too. We are more than overcomers, we hope. I'm staying used to these are interesting ideas. Again, I want to help you get on the radio. And by the way, one of the best ways to start is to say, Stan, I'd like to um, perhaps sponsor your program and talk to you so I can pitch my stuff. We're always looking for patrons and sponsors. And uh, perhaps you have a, a way that you can participate in our program. I believe you can. Again, Stan Houston at gmail.com, S T A N H U S T A D, uh, at the proverbial gmail.com. We have other ones, but you'll remember that one easier. Okay, time for a break. We'll be back. One of the programs I've done uh, in uh, kind of the the uh, Christian religious sphere, which obviously you know I operate in that thing. Uh, I do that part of my life and work too. I have many operations going on, and one of them are very particularly. The Jesus Entrepreneur Experience is uh, strongly, and you would love some of the things you would learn in that. And uh, then uh, a variety of others. I'm helping a variety of religious organizations do podcasts. Well, um, in effect, uh, I had a wonderful experience again yesterday. And here's what happened. Because I, at one time, did a program that simply said, was Jesus a cowboy? And the way I frame that is that, uh, in effect, uh, you know, he... (laughs) He was a carpenter, yeah, but he talks about being the good shepherd. And uh, what do shepherds do? Uh, Shepherds take care of sheep. And um, if Jesus is a good shepherd, he says he was, that's what he came to be. Uh, Could he be a cowboy? And that literally shepherds were not first class people. That was not a great job, even though in the Christmas story, it kind of makes them out as a little bit of heroes. But um, the wonderful contrast was that the the wise men, rich from the East, and they came a long ways, but the poor, poor shepherds, who were essentially cowboys, only they did sheep rather than cattle, uh, were the people who left their flocks on the hillside. Someone had to stay there to watch them, but they went down to see what the angel said, and there they discovered the newborn Christ child. Okay, that's the story. But they were were animal herders. And so uh, could it be that uh, Jesus uh, takes the instrument of his birth and takes instruments of technology (laughs) in how to do that, how shepherds worked, And he puts them into his stories, and he puts them uh, literally from many of the references in the Hebrew scriptures that uh, God is like a shepherd. You know, the most famous that often is said at funerals, uh, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay, enough for that. (laughs) But here's what happened. The... uh, Last Sunday, in many, many churches throughout the world, it is uh, the fourth Sunday after the Easter celebration, and they have what is called uh, uh, the the Lord's Shepherd, the Good Shepherd Sunday. And they read the story, and they tell the story of, you know, God is a shepherd. And the children's sermon went around that, but it's very creative. What happened is... They were talking about, and, and the, uh, <laughs> the gentleman doing the sermon says, have you ever seen a sheep? And they all, well, now you get to, and all of a sudden, right down the middle of the church aisle comes these two uh, shepherds holding two young lambs. 
and one of them starts to bleat and yell, and it's quite a scene as the children gather around, and they're so excited to see these sheep. Obviously, some of them are a little scared of them, just like anything else. Some of them wreck. And then they talked about that, and they said, well, let's go out and uh, let's go play with the sheep for a while, and we'll feed them, and then you can come back and sit with your parents, you know, after you've washed your hands. <laughs> and they went out, and for, for about 10 or 15 minutes before the actual sermon started, there were other things, of course, they, they were out playing with the sheep. And then the pastor, who's a remarkable man, uh, uh, was literally head of the Air Force chaplains, who's now doing somewhat of an interim uh, work at this church here in Cary, uh, North Carolina. And he points out, and this caught me, he said, the idea of a shepherd is someone who rescues you, takes care of you, helps you out. That's what the shepherds do for the sheep. It, they protect them, they help them, they care for them. Um, and he went on to say, you know, every one of us is going to need a shepherd sometime. And there'll be a situation where we really need help. And most people look for shepherds in the wrong things. <laughs> they think money Power, sex, influence, all of the things that we think will help us out of the messes we are in, we will try. So everybody is looking for a shepherd. We're all looking for shepherds because we all will need a shepherd at some time, maybe many times. And so let's make sure that we're looking for shepherds in all the right places and in all the right places persons. Well, I'll just let that sit on your head for a Monday evening. Do you need a shepherd? And uh, who or where or what are you looking for to be one for you? Stan Houston, interesting ideas. I hope they're helpful to you. Uh, we'll finish up and um, make an invitation and a little bit of a promotion and then uh, we're done. All the best and blessings to you as you go through the week. Thank you so much for being part of the program. And I would love to have your participation, so please do that. As I've said many times, uh, three to seven times, stanhousted at gmail.com, Stan Houston at gmail.com. Please recommend us. Please put a nice review or recommendation for us. And uh, please be in touch with us. And uh, perhaps you can find a way to uh, make your mark in the marketplace. That's what we do, and we think we can help you do it well. Help you reach your audience. And uh, perhaps uh, not only reach them, connect with them, and uh, help them, and in uh, you helping them, they'll help you, and uh, that's the mark of a good business, and we can help you improve your business. Again, Stan Houston at gmail.com, and uh, we'll be back, if we can, on Tuesday with more interesting ideas. All the best. Till next time, bye for now. Thank you.